Howdy, friends and neighbors. I hope you've all received your copy of The Salutary Gift, a Lenten daily devotion of meditations on the Lord's Supper. If you haven't received one, please contact the church, and we will make arrangements to get one to you, because this little booklet is full of wisdom and scripture that helps us to better understand the Lord's Supper. Right now, our church family is scheduled to celebrate the Lord's Supper together on Sunday, March 7th, on Monday, Thursday, which is April 1st this year. No, I'm not joking. And we are also planning to celebrate the Lord's Supper together on Easter Sunday, which is on April 4th this year. It is my hope and prayer that reading these devotions each day will help us to grow in faith and will give us a deeper understanding of the meaning and importance of the Lord's Supper, which will enhance our experience of celebrating the Lord's Supper together on each of those occasions and well into the future. If you've started reading your first devotion, the one for today, Ash Wednesday, then you probably noticed that the scripture for today's reading comes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Now you may be thinking, Genesis? Wait, that book was written a very, very long time before Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. And that is correct. But as we find in reading the devotion for today, even way back in the beginning, in the second chapter of Genesis, God was already at work in the lives of his people in ways that ultimately reached their redemption in Jesus Christ and through the Lord's Supper. If you have time, I encourage you all to go back and read chapters 2 and 3 of Genesis. I thought about reading the whole thing to you right now, but it's a little on the long side. Still, I think it's worthwhile to go back and contemplate these scenes because they provide a bigger picture than just the selection you see in your devotional guide. In these passages of scripture, we learn about the Garden of Eden and about two very special trees that grew in that garden. One was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and one was the tree of life. When Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for the first time, they knew evil. Prior to that, all they had ever known was good. We know this because as God created the various stages of creation, at the conclusion of each, God pronounced them good. So evil entered into the world, and God bars the way to the tree of life to prevent Adam and Eve from eating of that tree. Why does God do this? Is God punishing them? No, we're actually told in Genesis chapter 3 verse 22 that God did this so that man might not eat of the tree and live forever. In other words, God did this to protect Adam and Eve because if they were to eat of the tree of life, they would be stuck forever in this life, knowing good and evil. And God wanted something better for them. In our devotion for today, we read that Jesus Christ is the second Adam who overcame Adam's sin by the tree of the cross. This is a reference to some very ancient theology that Christians have contemplated since the very beginning. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in the New Testament of our Bibles, we read again of these comparisons between Adam and Jesus, which speak of Adam as the first man, and Jesus as the second man. There we learn in verse 46 that Adam was of the physical, a man of the dust. And Jesus was spiritual, the man of heaven. And in verse 50 we're told, Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Jesus is the one who reverses the curse of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Jesus came from heaven and returned to heaven and promises that we will be united with him one day in heaven. Our bodies are mortal bodies, bodies of dust. But Jesus 
was born of the Spirit. Because Jesus entered into human form, he was able to redeem our human form. This can be tricky for us to understand, but here's a very good example of how this works. During this COVID-19 pandemic, one of the greatest tools the doctors have against COVID is the blood of the survivors. The antibodies in the blood and plasma can literally save the lives of thousands of people. And it's a huge part of the reason why the death rate for those who contract COVID-19 is no longer as high as it was when the virus was newer. We have supplies of COVID-19 antibodies generously donated by those who have survived. And when those antibodies enter the bodies of those who are fighting COVID, they literally change the body's ability to fight off the disease. And in many cases, they allow that person to win the fight. We have physical bodies, what Genesis and 1 Corinthians call bodies of dust. We come from dust and we will return to, to dust. But Jesus is of the spirit and is therefore imperishable. When we partake of Holy Communion, we are given the gift of a tiny portion of Jesus antibodies, that is of Jesus' imperishable spiritual self. It is Christ himself who sustains us in this life, that we might be united with him in the kingdom of God. All of that is an amazing gift. You can read more about it in 1 Corinthians, specifically chapter 15, and of course in chapters 2 and 3 of Genesis. And I hope you'll be encouraged to keep reading with us in our daily devotional readings and join us right back here next Wednesday for another midweek reflection as we make our journey through Lent and learn more about the meaning of the Eucharist, also known as the Lord's Supper. See you next week. Bye-bye.